If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Maybe you've heard that before. What if I told you there's only one plan you need to have to win in life, to win today? I know that's a strong statement, but here's what I think it would be. In anything, in everything, make sure the Lord goes before you. Daily Dosers, my name is Amber Hoffland. I'm the Vista Campus Communications Coordinator. And today we come to the next section in our story in the Battle of Jericho. God has just given Joshua the instructions to give to the people, and we pick it up in Joshua 6, verse 6. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. Now I want to stop right here, because already in two verses, the Ark of the Covenant, or the Ark of the Lord, has been mentioned three times. When you hear the Ark, I want you to just think God's presence. The ark goes back to Exodus when they were building the tabernacle. It's this box that was in the innermost part of the tabernacle that was the dwelling place of the Lord. It was the hot spot of God's presence. Picking up in verse 8. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. I'm going to jump down to verse 11. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city going about it once and they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. So they're basically just carrying out the instructions and doing exactly what God told them to do. What I want you to notice is this is a bad plan. Like in terms of military strategy, this makes no sense. They are following a box around a city in circles. <laughs> the Ark is the central figure of this plan. It's mentioned 11 times in this chapter. Basically, the Lord is the plan. Following God is the plan. And when that is the plan, it's a guaranteed victory because it's his victory. God wins every battle that he fights. And when we follow after him, he invites us to participate in his victory. So even though it looks like a bad plan on the surface, there is no plan that's better than following after God. In my life, I have dreams and desires that God hasn't led me into. And it would be so easy for me to go, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this without you. I don't need you to do this. But there actually is no victory I want if it's not God's victory. I don't want a plan if it's not the plan God has for me. There is no dream or desire, plan or person in the world that's better off without the Lord. There's nowhere that I want to go, nothing that I want to do if God is not already there going before me. So how do we make sure that God goes before us? Because you and I are probably not going to walk a box around a city <laughs> anytime soon. But here's something that I do, just a simple, practical way when I pray. I pray, God, if this is what you want, would you open the door so wide that no one and nothing could possibly shut it? And if it's not what you want, would you close the door so tightly that no one and nothing could possibly open it? And sometimes God opens a door for a season, and then he goes, okay, this has served its purpose. We're going to shut it. And so I also pray, God, if at any point you don't want me on this path anymore, would you redirect? And I give him that permission. Daily Dosers, I want to invite you into this plan, the only plan with a guaranteed victory. I want to invite you today to pray, to trust, to be obedient to stay in God's presence, and to make sure the Lord goes before you. Thanks, dosers.